Hello! This is Watching for a Friend where I watch movies because I love them and let you know if it's worth it or not. Today I'm going to be reviewing Radius. Radius is a Canadian movie released in 2017 about a man that wakes up from a car crash with no memory. He soon discovers that people are mysteriously dying around him and he's also contacted by a woman who says she was also in the crash but also has no memory of who she is either. So they set out to figure out who they are, how they know each other, what they're doing at the time of the, what they were doing at the time of the crash together, and how people are dying around him. Now for those of you who haven't seen this movie, there will be spoilers. So before I get into the synopsis of the movie, let me tell you who I think will enjoy it. If you like Lifetime movies, you'll enjoy this one. It had a quiet, laid back, made for, two, made for TV kind of vibe that focused on the characters, the story, and the details. It didn't have much action, and although it was sci-fi based, there wasn't a ton of scientific it wasn't overly scientific, I'll say, and it didn't have a lot of scientific jargon or anything like that. Another reason I think the Lifetime crowd will like this is that as a viewer, you spend the majority of the movie focused on trying to figure out what the two main characters' relationship is um, more than anything else. It's, it's primarily based on them trying to figure out how they know each other and if they knew each other before this accident. The second group of people that I think will like this movie are people who like crime mysteries. So this movie did a good job, in my opinion, at letting things unfold very, very slowly. Um, we're learning everything along with these two main characters, and which gives us lots of time to try to figure things out on our own without you know, things being revealed to us. So I did appreciate that about this movie. So if you like those crime mysteries and you like to you know, try to put the pieces together yourself and figure out what happens before everything is revealed, this is the movie for you. Now with that being said, people who don't mind a slow movie will appreciate this movie more than other people who like to see some action really, really early on or action throughout the film. This movie is carried by the main characters Liam and Jane, also known as Rose in the movie, and is primarily them just discussing their life or clues of their life prior to losing their memory. The first time I watched it, my attention was pretty passive and because of the pace of the movie, I really didn't feel like I missed anything. The second time that I went through and the other times that I went looking for details, I did feel that it dragged just a little bit for me because of the pace of the movie. So you'd have to be able to really enjoy a slow moving movie in order to really appreciate this one. If you fall into any of these categories, I'd recommend this movie. The acting was solid, the directing was pretty good, and the story I feel was really well written. There weren't a ton of holes, there weren't a ton of, you know, unnecessary twists or unnecessary characters in it, so I felt like the writing was pretty solid in this as well. But there are still a few things that I feel like I'd like to see, or details that I wish they would have addressed. I'll go into more detail as I proceed with the review, but for now, if you have not seen this movie and feel like you're interested in watching it, go on and watch it and come back and let me know what you're thinking. For everyone else, feel free to proceed with this review. Now, I don't know if it's just me, but I have to say, I've watched this movie multiple times to take notes and to grab certain details, and the one thing I can't quite get past is how unintentionally funny the first 20 minutes are. I don't know if there's anything that they could have done for, for me to take it seriously. Now what I found funny was that when Liam wakes up he's re reasonably disoriented, his head is bleeding, um, he's clearly been through some sort of trauma and as he seeks help he's also accidentally killing everyone and everything that he comes into that even gets not even just comes into contact with but gets remotely close to things. He's just killing things left and right. So the first instance is when he flags down a driver on the ro on a on, on a road that he is on. It's kind of a deserted road. It's the only driver on that road. 
Now the driver sees him and signals that they're gonna get over, but as the car gets closer, it starts becoming apparent that it's not stopping. And so it almost hits Liam. He like moves out of the way and he's like, whoa, he gets all offended. Like, dude, you almost hit me. Only to find out when he goes to check on the driver that the, the driver is dead and the, her eyes are glazed over. So he obviously panics. He calls police. He's getting really bad reception because he's clearly radiating some kind of signal that's messing things up. They can't really hear what he's saying. When they ask for his name, then they, he, he realizes he can't even recall his name. So he ends up not even completing the call because it gets dropped. Now, he does find his wallet like in one of his pockets, he checks his license, he finds out that his name is Liam. And he also sees that there's an address on his license, obviously. And he runs off. Now, he arrives at a nearby diner to see if he can get help there, but lo and behold, once he gets inside, everyone inside there is dead and their eyes, all, all the victims have the same glazed over eyes as the driver and then outside a van also crashes. He goes outside, the driver has the same, you know, glazed over eyes. So now he's thinking that there's some sort of, you know, airborne chemical event that's happening. So he like covers his face and, and, and like is like sets off into the woods. He's like, I gotta get out of here. And the whole time, it just it reminds me of like that stinky kid in elementary school who has this like funky aura around him and nobody wants to play with him. And he's like, why won't anybody play with me? With me? <laughs> And I feel like that's Liam. He's going around super reckless, so clueless. He's so panicked. And the whole time he's the one bringing death upon everyone. Now, as the movie goes on, there is one detail that I couldn't quite that I wasn't quite sold on. We know he kills humans. We know he kills animals uh, because we saw the bird die earlier, but it's a little inconsistent just because he is in highly vegetated areas the entire time he's walking past trees, he's walking on grass. None of the grass, none of the trees die around him. He also at one point walks past a river, which I assume has some sort of wildlife either residing in it or around it and nothing pops up dead there. We don't see fish or frogs or tadpoles rising to the surface. We don't see bugs dropping midair. So that was a little inconsistent. Obviously, I know that would take quite a bit of budget, um, which the scale of this movie probably didn't have. I didn't even look at the budget. But I know that that would take a lot in special effects or, you know, even, even not even, yeah, it would just take a lot in special effects. So I understand that budget probably got in the way there, but it was a little inconsistent if he, if this radiation can affect humans and animals, but doesn't affect fish, bugs, or plant life. So here's another thing that I wasn't, that I was a little confused about. Liam seems to have, you know, bought a house. He has a successful business in what seems to be a small town, but there didn't seem to be anyone around that knew him. Now, mind you, he was avoiding people for the most part. That That's no secret. He was avoiding people. So he didn't have many opportunities for people, you know, to to go around people that he cared about. But as the story unfolded and he became a person of interest, no one stepped forward to vouch for the guy, say, hey, he's actually a cool dude, nothing like that, which I thought was a bit odd, especially since it seemed to be a small town where everybody seemed to know each other. Ooh, you know what? Could take the other one off. Anywho, Liam accidentally kills another man in the field behind his house as he's trying to warn him of the unsafe air. And only after this does he realize that maybe it's him that's bringing death upon everyone. So he decides to experiment on an anno annoying little bird outside of his house and finds that ding, 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 he is the reaper of death. <laughs> So he holds up in a shed, hoping to avoid killing anyone else. Now, later on, a woman shows up to his home and she's calling out his name and he does warn her not to come near the shed because again, he doesn't want to kill her. He wants to try to keep her safe. And she approaches the shed without any adverse reaction. So 
he thinks maybe he's cured in some way and then also there's a random dog out of nowhere it's a, it's a small dog it looks like a house dog but it's a random dog that comes sniffing around him and he's like oh maybe i'm cured maybe i'm not killing people after all he tells him that she was also in the car crash and she found his she found him because the police found that the truck that they were in was registered to him. Both lost their memories, which they find very peculiar. So they set out to try to find who they are together. So Liam rules out that he and her are in a relationship or not necessarily in a relationship, but he rules out that they're married or living together because there's no evidence that there's a woman living in the house that he's in. The other thing is that Liam doesn't can't remember the can't remember his computer password so they have to kick this investigation old school he does end up having a flashback of a bridge where he saw her so they decide to go back to that bridge to see if they can jog their memory and that's where they start once they are they get to the accident site they do find something super peculiar it's a 50 foot black circle and everything within this circle is dead so that is something that is very, very odd. And they know they were both where they both were lying when they woke up. So they do determine that they were inside of this circle. And Liam gets another flashback of himself being struck by lightning. And that is very, very quick. So we know that something, something odd, some kind of event happened here. And it has to do with electricity or lightning. He decides at this point to tell Jane that he's accidentally killing people that get close to him. Now after hearing this, Jane obviously tries to get as far away from Liam as possible since he is radiating death and she doesn't want to be his next victim. So she runs off and he follows after her convinced that he's cured since she hasn't died yet and since that one dog that one random dog isn't dead so but this is short-lived because soon a car passing by stops and since they're kind of creating a scene on the side of the road this woman stops to make sure that Jane is okay you know making sure it's not an abusive situation and it turns out that this is an off-duty cop and she recognizes Liam's face from you know them trying to search for him because of the accident and as Jane gets further and further away from them, unfortunately, she gets more than 50 feet away and this off-duty police officer drops dead right in front of Liam. And at this point, Liam kind of connects the dots and realizes that Jane is neutralizing this radius for him when she's within 50 feet. And when she leaves that 50 feet, he is back to being a killing machine. And he confirms this by experimenting on a goat nearby <laughs> that they find in a field somewhere and have it, you know, standing by this goat, having Jane back away from the goat and the sweet little goat goes down. I'm sorry to this goat. So Jane realizes that she's most likely not in danger, but also realizes that she has to stick close by to Liam to make sure that there aren't any other victims of his death radius. So they proceed with their investigation together. They set off to get Liam to a hospital, hoping that maybe a CT scan could tell them something. Ultimately, the doctor doesn't find anything and the scan reveals nothing. But while they're there, they see a news report on TV connecting Liam to the off-duty police officer that died earlier in the day and the man that died in the field behind Liam's house earlier that he was trying to warn. So now he's a person of interest and they think he is armed and dangerous. So they have to get out of this hospital before people start catching on. Unfortunately, the police are already there. Once they spot them, a very low energy pursuit ensues. They do go to get into an elevator to take them down so they can get out. 
but Jane gets distracted by a missing poster with her face on it. So Liam ends up in a crowded elevator with, by himself and the door is closed before Jane can get to him. So this is another moment where it was intended to be very tense and scary, but it was more comical to me than anything because poor Liam is ready to go full on fetal position in the corner of this elevator begging people to get out of it and Jane is just kind of running up and down the stairs trying to stay within 50 feet of him. So again, very comical. At this point, um, or during this point, nobody, there's no damage done, but it's just, you know, the melodrama of it all is pretty funny to me. So when Jane wakes up in the morning, she does hear on the radio that she's been identified by her husband, who is desperate to find her and is begging her to return home. He doesn't care what she's done. He just wants her to come home. So she convinces Liam, who's very, very hesitant to go back into the general public uh, because he knows what he's capable of. She convinces him to go find this man uh, that her you know, this, this husband of hers. She finds out her name is Rose. They locate the husband and although he's pretty wary of his wife showing up with this really handsome dude in the driver's seat, he still goes with him because he really trusts his wife. They let him know what is going on. They let him know that she has to stick by him, you know, within 50 feet of him or else he will kill people or kill things and he believes them and allows them to hide in his store until they can figure out how to convince authorities that he is not, that Liam's not intentionally killing all of these people. While they're at the store, his, her husband reveals a lot more about Rose's life. So it turns out that the missing poster that she saw actually wasn't her. It was her twin sister who went missing over a year ago. Well, when her sister's disappearance hit a year, she lost it all over again and ran out on him after a fight. And it turns out that she had done this multiple times. So at first he wasn't alarmed, but after several days, he absolutely became scared that she had done something to herself or something had happened to her as well. That she had planned on ending her life that night by jumping off of a bridge. It's the same bridge that she met Liam. And Liam is the person that talked her off of the ledge. And so she feels indebted to Liam in some way because she feels that she saved him. So this strengthens the bond that they already have. Meanwhile, Rose's husband contacted authorities and the police come a knocking, <laughs> looking to take Liam away. Now, they don't have time to get away, so they comply with the police and plead with the police to keep them together and not separate them. Now, of course, the police don't listen to them because they're like, you're criminals. How dare, why would you think that we would listen to any of your requests? So they take one person out the front and one person out the back, which I felt was, you know, that wasn't smart. If they're saying, hey, don't separate us or you're gonna die. I think police care for their lives enough to not keep them in the same direction, you know, to keep them going in the same direction. I, that I didn't understand why the police weren't taking any precautions, but they separate them. As soon as they're 50 feet apart, everyone around Liam dies. It was a lot of people too. Bystanders, police officers, lots of people died. And Rose and Liam run back to each other and decide to head north to his cabin, which he, he remembered that he had a cabin up, you know, in the woods. It was very isolated, so they decide to go there. Now, on their way to the cabin, they stop at a gas station. And while inside, there's a report on the news that there's been some kind of cosmic event that was caught on one of the space station cameras. And it looks like a big lightning bolt that came all the way from space and struck down right in the East Coast somewhere. But it's unspecified where exactly it struck. So this clues Rose and Liam in to that's what happened. It was some kind of cosmic event. We don't know if it's an alien or if it was some kind of electric surge from space somewhere. We don't know what it is and that's never explained. So they do arrive at the cabin and for the first time they feel free because it is isolated. There are no people for miles so they should be fairly safe. They could see people approaching if they need to and so they relax a little bit. 
but Liam is really worried that they will never find a cure and that Rose is destined to have to stay by his side forever and ever and Rose says I won't even care she is really starting to fall for him and that is again if you love Lifetime, you're gonna love this. Movie. Liam goes out to have a walk and ends up on a rowboat. Uh, he remembers, you know, he keeps having flashbacks of this rowboat on the lake. And so he goes out to the rowboat on the lake. Meanwhile, Rose is back at the cabin and she finds this book that seems to be hidden. As she's looking through this book, she sees that it is missing posters of women and you know, on one side of the book, on one side of the page, and then on the opposing page, there's like journal entries of their deaths. So here is where the big twist happens, is that it turns out that Liam is a serial killer. <laughs> And so, and Liam has the same realization at the same time he gets a flashback when he's on the boat of, of Rose's sister that he tied up and gagged and pushed into this lake. So we know that her sister is in the lake, at the bottom of the lake somewhere, and they both have this realization at the exact same time. One thing that I really always want from a twist is for it to change your entire perspective of the movie. I love to go back and be like, oh, that point where I thought he was really sweet now seems super sinister, but that didn't happen. I actually still really, <laughs> liked Liam and I really felt bad for him. Afterward, he doesn't change into the sinister person. He actually has deep regret. He's like, I can't believe I would do something like this. So it's a little, I don't, he doesn't turn into a bad person after this. He actually stays the same person for the rest of the movie. So the twist, um, although it was a really good twist, you don't, it doesn't affect the movie in a negative way at all because you're like, you know, he's still such a good guy. And so that's the only thing that I really wanted from that twist. I wanna go back and be like, oh my goodness, that changes everything that just happened. So it kind of defeated the purpose of a twist, you know. So they both have this realization that Liam's trash. <laughs> so Rose grabs a shotgun and finds Liam at the lake, demands him to tell her where her sister is. So they have a moment of emotion and as she's trying to figure out what to do with Liam next, they get ambushed by these three guys who have been following them them since that gas since they were at that gas station and these guys try to beat up Liam because they recognize him from you know being a person of interest they think he's a terrorist of some kind and they're kind of drunk so they start trying to beat up Liam and then they take the gun away from Rose so Liam does what he thinks is best and he slowly backs away from Rose killing two of the men and then the younger man who was the son or the younger brother um he ends up getting really he get, goes into shock Rose tries to run away he ends up shooting Rose and Liam then runs toward him killing him and then goes to, to try to save Rose so Rose has been shot in the side Liam takes her to the emergency room Room, and Rose is rushed on a gurney by hospital staff and as she's she's a little bit disoriented but she's asking where Liam is because she knows she can't be too far from him and as they rush Rose away we see Liam shooting himself in the head effectively ending this entire disaster. Now I'm typically not a fan of serial killers shooting themselves before they get their day in court but because I really liked Liam I actually didn't mind this ending and I felt like it was appropriate for this journey that we had come upon. And when I think about the aftermath of all of these things, once if as assuming that Rose survives, she can take every she can take authorities back to the cabin, show them all of the evidence, find her sister and hopefully find the bodies of the other women that went missing. So I do feel like it got wrapped up in a nice little bow. Oh, and hopefully she can solve all of the other cases. So tell me what you thought of this movie. Did you think that the beginning was as bizarre and hilarious as I did? Did you appreciate the twist? Let me know in the comments. Also, if you like this video and you wanna see more from me, give a good old thumbs up and hit that good old subscribe button. Until then, check out my other videos if you haven't already, and I'll see